and I'm going to briefly demonstrate how to set up ArcScan's electronic shelf labels. Before we begin, let's go over the main components of the ESL system. These are the labels. They can come in various sizes, and this is where the product information will be displayed. The products and items that you are selling are referred to as articles. This is a coordinator. It's the device that relays information from your computer to the labels. To get things started with the setup process, let's go over the physical connection. Make sure your coordinator is plugged into a power source. Connect it to your router or network via an ethernet cable. Make sure it is the same network that your computer is connected to. As long as your computer is on the same network, either through Wi-Fi or wired connection, the ESL software should be able to automatically detect and establish a connection with a coordinator. On to the software side of things. Be sure to download all of the necessary files before running the ESL software. This includes .NET Framework 4.5.2, the Access Database Engine 32-bit, and if your operating system is Windows 7, you need to upgrade your Internet Explorer to Internet Explorer 11. These three can be downloaded from the email that we've sent you. Also from the email, you must download the ESL software and the database file named ESL underscore DB. Once you have everything ready, extract or unzip the ESL software. Once you have that out, copy the database file and paste it into the resource folder. Next, you're ready to open the utility software. Upon opening the ESL software, it's going to ask you for firewall permissions as well. Make sure to allow it or else you won't be able to establish a connection with your coordinator. When you open the utility software, automatically the composer and the scheduler will open as well. This is the composer. What it does is check for any changes that occur in your ESL system within a set time interval to determine whether or not an update is required. You can change the time interval if you'd like, but in this case, it's checking every 10 seconds if there are any updates that need to be pushed out to the labels. During operation, you'd want to keep this open at all times to ensure that your labels are updating properly. This is a scheduler. Here, you can monitor the status of your ESL system. When it opens, you should automatically detect the coordinator that's connected to the network. This process can take up to 15 minutes long, but on average, it would take only about 5 minutes. If 15 minutes has elapsed and it still has not detected your coordinator, it can be one of four things. 1. Your coordinator is not powered on. 2. Your coordinator is not connected to the same network as your computer. 3. There is another computer in your network that is running the same ESL software which was already connected to the coordinator. Or 4. Your firewall is blocking the software or you did not accept network permissions. Once it connects, you should be able to see that it appears in your list of coordinators. Shortly afterwards, it should automatically detect and update the contents of your shelf labels. This can take another 15 minutes, but you can monitor the progress of the updates in real time from the scheduler. When it finishes updating, you should be able to see the product information on your labels. If you want to make any changes to the product information, you can do so in a few ways. One of the methods that we recommend is called file dropping. Let's practice this. Keep all of the ESL software running and open. You can minimize it though if you'd like. Open up the article file located in the lab folder.
Edit the value that you'd like to change and save it. Copy the Excel file. Then paste it into the shared folder. The file will be picked up by the ESL software, then disappear and update your changes into the database automatically. The composer will detect that a change has been made to the database, and it will generate the image that will be displayed, and then push out the update to the labels. Another way you can change your article data is directly through the software. Go to Edit, click on Articles, and you can edit the articles directly from this menu. Make the changes that you want, and you can close out of it when you're done. It saves automatically. And again, the coordinator will detect the changes in the database and push those updates out to the labels. Next, I'll briefly go over the template editor. To access this, go to Tools, then Template Editor, and you can see the existing templates that come with the software. You can edit these to fit your needs, or you can make a new one by going to File and then New. Choose the size of your label and then press Open. This row comprises of the different elements that you can add to your template. For example, if you want to add a piece of text, Click on Text and the text box will appear. In the Property menu on the bottom right hand side, you can manipulate the properties of the selected element. Suppose you want it to say Steakhouse LLC. I would change the text to Steakhouse LLC and you can position it to wherever you see fit. The Select option is a variable element which will pull information from your article's data, which will then project onto the label. This can be price, item name, promotion reason, etc. For example, let's say we want this to be the article name. In the properties menu, we go to the data source and choose the variable element that we want this text to transform to. So if we want it to be the name of the item, I will pick name one. I will also want the price of the article to appear on the label. So I'll press select again to create another one. and set this one to the price. I'll make sure the font size is a little bigger and position it towards the middle of the label. The select values that you see on the label preview are placeholder values. So suppose you assign this template to a sweet tomato, the name 1 will change to sweet tomato and price underscore 1D will change to sweet tomato's corresponding price. Once you are done with your template, Go to File and Save As. Assign your template a name, and I will name mine Test1. Click OK. To assign the template to one of your labels, go to Edit, Label, then check the Show All box. By default, only the labels that are not paired with an article shows up. The labels highlighted in red indicate that they are already paired with an article and the labels that are not highlighted indicates that it is not paired with an article. This is where you can apply or change the templates for your labels. Suppose I want to change the template for this label to the new template I just made. I would change it from what it currently is to test1. Just make sure that the size of the label matches the size of the template or else you would run into some issues. The label's image will automatically update to the new template we just created. I'm also going to assign it to this unpaired label for testing purposes later. You also have the option of assigning templates to specific articles. You can assign it under the templates column in your Excel sheet and then use the file drop method. Or you can do it from the edit articles menu directly. 
just make sure you type in the template name exactly how you have it saved. Something to keep in mind is that if you decide to assign templates to your articles instead of the labels, this will override your label templates. In the case in which you have template test 1 assigned to apples, and you have template name test 2 assigned to the label that the article is bound to, the template test 1 will have priority over test 2. So the template that will appear on the label is test 1. Let's say you want to add an item to your list of articles. Our recommended method is going into the articles Excel file located in your lab folder, add your new article here on the next empty row, and fill in the details. When you create new articles, the only mandatory column is the barcode column. Make sure you assign a value here. This column is what uniquely identifies each article. You cannot have two articles with the same value in the barcode column or else you will end up with some errors. The other columns are optional. For example, if you feel like you don't need to display the manufacturer information, you can just leave it blank. You also have the option of adding new columns, which can be assigned to your templates. The new columns that you add will show up as an option from the select element from the template editor. This allows for incredible flexibility in regards to organizing article data and what content each business may want to display on the labels. Save the file, copy it, and then paste it into the shared folder. Once it disappears, you should now see your new article in the Edit Articles menu. To assign it to a label, right-click on the box over here to the left of the article and select Bind Labels. Here, you can pick which labels to bind the article to. However, you wouldn't be able to bind it to labels that are already paired with another article. Right-click on the box on the left and select Auto Pair. This item is now paired with a label. Now suppose you want to pair it with a label that already has an article paired to it. Just go to the article that you want to override and select Unbind Labels. Now, any labels that were previously bound to that article is free to use. You also have the option of binding one article to several labels at once. To do that, press Bind Labels as you normally would, and while staying on the Bind Labels menu, bind it to the rest of the labels you would like the article to appear on. In a few moments after the labels update, they will all display that article's information with each label's assigned template. Our ESL system is meant to seamlessly update and automate the product content from your POS or ERP systems directly to the labels in your store. Here are the ways to integrate both systems together. 1. Your software can export the updated article into an Excel file or CSV file and drop the file into the shared folder, which our ESL software will process the article file and push the updated article's content to the labels as we've demonstrated earlier. 2. Since our ESL database is open, your application software can directly access and update the article on your database, where you are given the flexibility to implement any solution that meets your needs. That about wraps it up for the ArcScan ESL Setup Overview. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to us and we'll be happy to help.